This call is being recorded. Welcome to the Guiding Light Ministry Prayer and Bible Study Conference Call. This is the Sunday School Lesson Edition. I am your host, Pastor Mark McCoy of New Harvest Church in Harvest, Alabama. Uh, We'll be studying the Sunday School Lesson this morning from Leviticus chapter 23, verses 33 through 43. Leviticus chapter 23, verses 33 through 43. And the title of today's lesson is the Feast of Boots or the Feast of Tabernacles. Uh, we've been doing a study in the in, in all of the feasts that God ordained in, in um, for the children of Israel and for the Jews of that time. And we're looking now at the Feast of Boots or, like I said, the Feast of Tabernacles. Let us go again to the Lord in prayer briefly. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for for your word. Your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We thank you for your word, dear Lord, and we just ask you now that as we study this lesson, that the words that are in this lesson that, that you ordained for the children of Israel will penetrate our hearts and our minds so that we can think about how to be thankful for everything that you've done for us. And, Lord, help us to to hear your word today and not just be, I mean, to hear your word and not only hear your word, but to also be doers of your word. It's in the mighty and sufficient name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Uh, Leviticus chapter 23. I'm going to read it starting at verse 33. Leviticus chapter 23 starting at verse 33. And it reads as follows, and and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of this seventh month shall be the feast of tabernacles for seven days unto the Lord. On the first day you shall shall be on the first day shall be an, an holy convocation. You shall do no servile so, so work therein. Seven days you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. On the eighth day, on the eighth day, shall you be a holy convocation unto the Lord, and ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. It is a solemn assembly, and ye shall do no severe work therein. These are the feasts of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to the holy convocation to offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord, a burnt offering and a meat offering and a sacrifice and drink offering, everything upon this day. Beside the Sabbath of the Lord and beside your gifts and beside all of your vows and beside all of your free will offerings which ye give unto the Lord, also on the 15th day of the seventh month, when you have gathered in the fruit of the land, you shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. On the seventh day you shall shall be a Sabbath, and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. And ye shall take you on the first day the, the uh, broods of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, and broods of thick trees, and willows, of the book, and ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. And ye shall keep it as a feast unto the Lord seven days in the year. And it shall be a statute forever ever in your generation, and ye shall celebrate it on the seventh month. You shall dwell in boots seven days. All that are Israel born shall dwell in boots, and that your children may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in boots when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Amen and amen. That is the reading of the word Leviticus chapter 23, verse 33 through 40. Amen. And make sure I got them all. Yes. Excuse me, to 43. Not forty to forty-three. Um, this is this is is is, is one of those lessons where uh, God is 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 telling the children of Israel to 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 institute a feast, and and we 
we're going to look at it from that 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 kind of concept. Um, the key concept that we want to grab a hold of this from this lesson is that we ought to remember what God has done and be thankful. And that's why God had them to do this feast, so they would always remember what he has done for them in the past and, and, and then be thankful for what, what he's doing for them in the past. But in the midst of it, remembering what he's doing right now and what he's going to do in the future and to be thankful for it. And so when we look at this lesson today, we're going to break it down into to three parts, the institution of the feast, the requirements of the feast, and the celebration of the feast. Um, and if you don't mind, I'm, 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 I'm being led today to, to talk about this lesson as, and as a, at a very elementary level. I mean, we could get down deep into the lesson and deep into what each part of the scripture says, but the overall concept, I believe, has to be grabbed a hold to. When I think about uh, uh, this Feast of Boots, uh, uh, from, from a background standpoint, um, the Feast of Boots is, 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 or the Feast of Tabernacle is, is, is stated here that we are to celebrate, or that the children of Israel, excuse me, were to celebrate this, on, on the 15th day of the seventh month, the 15th day of the seventh month. What made that so significant is, is that um, this is saying that they should wait five days after the Day of Atonement to, to come and, 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 and start this Feast of Boots. The Day of Atonement, or, or as they call it today, Yom Kippur, was a day where they had a solemn atonement and sacrifices were given. A scapegoat was let go and a goat was killed and all that. We talked about all of that on last week. This this was where they asked God for forgiveness of their personal sins. That's what the children of Israel were required to do, and God had instituted this. And so after that, the, the day of atonement, then they would start, Five days later, they will start this uh, Feast of Tabernacle or Feast of Boots. And what's beautiful about this is is that, that what it is saying, before you start celebrating, before you go to this point of joy, you need to have holiness. You need your sins for, forgiven. So, so that tells me is that, that we can't be happy in our sins. We have to have some holiness, some righteousness. And so God wants us to be holy, and then when we become holy, that's when we become happy. Oh, you got to catch me here. When we become holy, that's when we become happy. When we walk around in the midst of our sin and our mess, that's when you can't have any happiness because your relationship with God is severed. And so that's why he has the Day of Atonement five days before he starts the Feast of Tabernacles. Now, this feast, this, this, this feast, this Jewish holiday is a feast that, that was, was, was celebrated for seven days. And it started on a Sunday, and then you, you, you did it for seven days, and then on the eighth day, well, I mean, not a Sunday, excuse me, it started on a Saturday on the Sabbath, and then for, 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 for seven days, you, you celebrated it. You started it off in the beginning on the Sabbath day as a day of a holy convocation, a holy assembly. The people came together, and then they celebrated it for a whole week. In the midst of this, he told them, and said, afterwards, it ends also on a Sabbath. On, 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 and so they did seven days, and then they had an eighth day where, they, where basically they said it ended. And that, that so it was a period of rest or, or where you did no work, and then you celebrated, then another period of rest. Now, this, 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 this celebration, this celebration was a commemoration. It was a memorial. It was a part to, to, for them to remember how God had delivered the children of Israel out of bondage, out of Egypt. It was that time where they could start to remember their their journey through the wilderness. 
and in the wilderness, we remember they journeyed for 40 long years, and they journeyed from one place to another, and then they would pitch their tents. And so these booths were to, 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 to emulate, to simulate that same kind of thing that happened in the wilderness that of them living in tents. They would, for a whole week, they would celebrate living in booths. Now, now, I, I look at this and I went, wow, we don't have anything that, 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 that is similar to that in Christianity today. We really don't have anything that's really similar to that uh, 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 in, 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 our, in our, um, the, the American tradition or the American church. Um, because typically we do, you know, we worship on the Sabbath, on the, on the Sunday, and because that's the Lord's day. And then we go throughout our week. Sometimes we might go to church on Wednesday or Tuesday to Bible study, might have a special program, and boom, we're done. Now, many churches back in the old days or olden days used to have what they call a holy convocation and a revival that went along with it. And many churches, I think, still kind of do that today, but it's not as prevalent as it is. But when I start looking at this text, and we're going to get down deep into it in a minute, when I start looking at this text, it, it said, well, this was the time of Thanksgiving. And then it dawned on me, especially in, in my family and, and, and our, our tradition, we celebrate Thanksgiving. And, it, and it's interesting that we see Thanksgiving as the end of the harvest season which is also correlates to what's going on in this text because the, the, the Feast of Boots or the Feast of Tabernacle was the end of harvest season. And so it was a time to thank God for all of the bounty that, 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 you, that you received, all of the, the harvest that you received throughout the year and how he had blessed the harvest. And so I, I think of this, the closest I have, like I said, to, to my mind, it's Thanksgiving, but now there's another thing that I that I because I've, I've lived up north and then now I live down south and basically spent the majority of my life in in the south and in Alabama. Uh, we celebrate this thing called homecoming. Homecoming is where people come who who used to be a part of this church or a part of that community and they come home and we have a big picnic. Uh, uh, you, you get your cards out and you put your, your tables out and, your, and, and all of that and you put food and everybody comes around everybody's table and eat and, and come around their cars and eat and you celebrate at that time of the year. It was a time to remember how God had delivered us, especially in the African American community, out of our slavery and now we had an abundance and we could come and share with one another. Another one of the things that I thought about was the, the what we call the June 10th celebration, and it's similar, but it's you know it, it's where we celebrate the Emancipation Proclamation. I've seen all of these kind of things, and and then as a college person, I like to go back to homecoming. Well, it's my college because it's a time of celebration of what God has done. So all of those things I, I thought about as I was uh, studying this lesson and going through it. And that's what I believe God was trying to do with the children of Israel, is to give them a time where they could remember all that he had done. And so this Feast of Tabernacle occurred on the 15th day of the seventh, uh, 15th day of the seventh month. The Feast of Tabernacle, like Passover, had a distinct connection to what God had already been doing and, 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 and what God had done for them in the in the 40 years in the wilderness. And so this Feast of Tabernacle or Feast of Boots was, was that time of the year. And so let's get into the, the text here. Uh, I'm going to read verses 33 and 34 again uh, from Leviticus chapter 23. And, and I'm, this time I'm going to read out of a New King James Version. And it says, Then the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of the seventh month shall be the feast of tabernacles uh, for, the seventh, uh, uh, for the seven days of the Lord. And so here we have the fifteenth day of the month 
of the seventh month. Seventh month in the Jewish calendar was the late part of the year, September, October kind of time frame. And so this was that time of, of the year where I had said, okay, um, we're going first we're going to take this seventh month and we're going to and we're going to set it aside and they had what they called uh, the feast of trumpets and the trumpets would blow and they would set that month aside and they would say it's holy and then after they started the month with the with the trumpets blowing then they went into the day of atonement a few days later and the day of atonement was that that day of getting rid of your sins uh, and, and and then they went into the booth, the tabernacles. That's how God set this thing up. And it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very powerful uh, way of God setting it up. Now, for us that are Christians, for us that are Christians, um, um, Jesus himself in the seventh chapter of, 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 of John, the seventh chapter of John, uh, around verse 37 and 38, he attended the Feast of, of Tabernacles or the Feast of Boots. Uh, uh, we know that, that uh, Jesus died, death, and resurrection was at the time of the Passover and that the church began seven days later, means uh, seven weeks later, uh, and, and we, we celebrate that. That's the day of Pentecost. That's the Feast of Weeks. And so... Now, in this seventh chapter of John, Jesus attends the, the, the Feast of Tabernacles, and he says something there, and, and this is what he says. He says, if any man thirst, he says, let, that, let, let him come to me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scriptures have said, out of him shall flow, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And what Jesus was doing, he, he was making this statement on the last day. He made that statement on the last day of that great feast. And what he was trying to do was help the, the, the children of Israel of his time to realize that he himself was, was the, the water, the drink offering. And, and, and then and they would celebrate this drink offering. And saying that that's what he was, because if you needed some water, he would be there for you. Just like when when God gave them water in the midst of the wilderness out of a rock. But in addition to that, he wanted them to also realize that that when you are coming to Christ, when you become a Christian, when you become a child of God, you are in a temporary booth yourself. You are in a temporary body, and eventually you're going to have to transition to something more permanent, and that Jesus was the way to get to that transition. You, Because out of your belly would flow rivers of living water. We would become living waters. Out of us would flow. And now that was an interesting part of this study that I found, and that, that, that Jesus was trying to even give them the transition, uh, uh, Christ is out, is, is tabernacling with us in our spirit, in our hearts, in our mind, and that he is only, this is only a prefigure of what will be, because one glad morning when, when this old earthly body gives up, when this old house that we live in, this temporary house that we live in lets go of us, we're going to transition to our permanent home. That's why when he told us over in John the 14th chapter, if you believe in God, believe also me in my father's house of men and masters, and I'll go to prepare a, a place for you that where I am there you may be also. This this is it's, it's part of this. This booth is to remember, this feast of booth is to remember the temporariness of life. And the fact that you're going through a temporary wilderness situation or journey, but God has got so much more for you. But he don't want you to forget who kept you, even in the wilderness. He don't want us to ever forget who kept us when we couldn't even keep ourselves. Oh, hallelujah. 
and that that's that's one of the beautiful parts about this. So so he instituted this 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 feast, and he told Moses to tell the children of Israel when to do it. And then now, as he instituted the feast, he lays out the requirements in verses thirty-five to thirty-nine of Leviticus chapter 23. Let's read what he says there out of the New King James Version. On the first day, on the first day, there shall be a holy convocation. You shall do no customary work on it. For seven days you shall offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. On the eighth day you shall have a holy convocation and you shall offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. It is a sacred assembly, and you shall do no customary work on it. These are the feasts of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations, to offer an offering made by fire to the Lord, a burnt offering and a grain offering and a sacrifice and a drink offering, everything on this day. Besides the Sabbath of the Lord, besides your gifts, beside all of your vows, and beside all your free will offerings, which you give to the Lord, Amen. And 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 I'm gonna read, I'm gonna read this also from the New Living Translation because I, I want to make sure I, I, I got it. Did I go down to the 39th verse? Oh, oh, let me do the 39th verse from the King James. And also, he says. On the fifth day of the seventh month, when you have gathered in the fruit of the land, you shall keep the feast of the of the Lord for seven days. And on the first day, there should be a seventh Sabbath rest, and on the eighth day, a Sabbath rest. So I, I want to read um, from, the, so like I said, from the, the New Living Translation. Um, make sure I get it right. Yeah, on on the first day of the feast, you must proclaim an official day of holy assembly, and when you and when you do no ordinary work. For the seventh day, you must present special gifts to the Lord. The eighth day is another holy day in which you present your special gifts to the Lord, and there will be a solemn occasion. No ordinary work may be done that day. These are the Lord's appointed feasts. Celebrate them each year as official days. Holy assemblies by presenting special gifts to the Lord, burnt offerings, grain offerings, uh, sacrifices, and and drink offerings, even on its proper day. The feast must be observed in addition to the Lord's regular Sabbath day, and the offerings are in addition to your personal gifts, the offerings you give to fulfill your vows, and the voluntary offerings you present to the Lord. Remember, this is the seven-day feast to the Lord, the feast of shelter or tabernacle or booth, beginning with the 15th day of the, of the appointed month, after you have harvested all the products of the land. This, the first day, and the eighth day of the feast will be days of complete rest. Wow. God God made sure that, that this, this whole thing he wanted to to lay out how he wanted this done and the regulations. And so as with other feasts, the celebration of the Feast of Tabernacle included sacrifices and, and offerings and, 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 and over in Numbers, it, when it talks about this in Numbers, the 29th chapter, it talks about the, the 70 bulls that were sacrificed during this time. And many people think about this set these seventy bulls as being symbolic of 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 what it went on at the Tower of Babel when there were seventy nations and they all started uh speaking different languages and separated. And this this now this feast that they were celebrated was to remember that God has, has unified the children of Israel and, and had and had brought them out of slavery. And now that he he was bringing them back that they would be a nation that would would not only uh, 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 glorify him and worship him, but they would be the nation that spread the good news that others might come in who are not of the children of Israel and worship the Lord thy God as one God, as one holy and powerful God. Amen. And so this this was that, that feast. That feast had its regulations. 
and God had laid this thing out of what, what he wanted the children of Israel to do and how he wanted them to do it. And so 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 um they were to to at this point um they would make these boots. They would make these boots. And and these boots it, it talk about how they would make them down in in, 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 in verses forty through forty three. And and it, it, it lays out how he wanted these boots to be made. And so as they celebrated this feast, um, they, he gave them the regulations of the sacrifice. He told them that they are to dwell in the booths, and then he told them how they should make these booths. These booths were not was not a permanent uh, a residence. It was temporary. And, and so he says in, in verses 40 through 43, he says, and you shall take for yourself on the first day um, the fruit of the beautiful trees, branches of the palm trees, the roots of leafy trees, and widows of the brook, and you shall rejoice before the Lord your God for seven days. You shall keep it as a feast to the Lord for seven days in the year, and it shall be a statue forever in your generation. You shall celebrate it in the seventh month. You shall dwell in set in the booths for seven days. All who are native Israelites shall dwell in the booths, and that your generation may know that I made the children of Israel dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord thy God. And so during this time, they were to gather these branches and certain kinds of trees and build the booths and live in them for a whole week. There was these requirements for the booth. They were to have three walls. Um, it ain't in this text, but it was just generally believed that they would have three walls and, and that they would be strong enough so the wind wouldn't blow them away and they could have, could be of any size. Some could probably be real large and some could be real small. It just depended on the family size. And the roof was made of of all of these leaves from all of these different trees and and branches and stuff like that. And they could decorate the roofs. As, as they wanted to with art and posters and hanging food and all of that. And then the families would meet in these booths and have their meal, and they would eat and celebrate, and they would invite other people over to come to their booth and eat and celebrate. And then they would sleep in these booths. And, and so from while they were sleeping, they could look up into the sky because the way that the booths, roofs were made, uh, they could look up and see the stars, and they could also feel the rain when the rain came. And this was all so that they could remember what God had did for the children of Israel in the wilderness. It was to commemorate it. It was to, to thank God, make it a memorial, make it a statue for what God had done in their lives, and, and to remember that God had been awesome to them as a people, and that every generation should be be in a position to remember what God had done for them. And so I, 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 I that's the essence of this lesson. And I, I know I ran through it real quick, and 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 but but I wanted us to capture that that that's what was going on. And and so now when we think about this as Christians. Many many Jews don't celebrate this anymore, but we as Christians, we need to remember what God has done for us. We 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 celebrate our celebrations are Christmas and our and Easter, where we remember uh, uh, Christmas is His birth and and Easter is His is His is His uh, day of resurrection, and He was the first fruit. But then we also celebrate. On on the on the uh, Sabbath or on the, excuse me our, on the Lord's Day on the Sunday we celebrate that Sunday every 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 week we celebrate His death His burial and His resurrection and then many churches have have uh, one one day out the I mean uh, one Sunday out of the, the the month where they have communion and then some churches even do communion every Sunday and, and we were told that that when we do our communions, that, 
that we remember. We remember the Lord and remember of his death, his burial, and his resurrection, and then also remember his coming back again. And so all of that is to, to remind us and to, 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 remit, to help us to remember, to be thankful, to celebrate him, that he saved our lives, that, that he's forgiven us of all of our sins and our shortcomings, and that, that one day, one glad morning, that he's going to come back and get us and take us out of this temporary world, because we're just pilgrims in this, this barren land. It's temporary that one day he's going to come back and put us in our permanent home with him, to be with him for all eternity. Oh, that's just powerful, and I'm thankful for this, and I praise his holy name. So at this time, I'm just going to, going to close out the recording, and then we'll open up for questions here in a minute. Uh, or even comments or things that you might want to add or talk about. I left a good little bit of time so we could do that. But before I close out the recording, I always like to pray the prayer of salvation for those that might be listening to this recording at a later time. Dear Father God, I confess in my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sins and was buried and that you raised him from the dead. I repent of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. I invite you, Jesus, to become the Lord of my life, to rule and to reign in my heart from this day forward. Please send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Um, just as a point for the recording, for those that are going to be following, next week we start in a new lesson of giving the gift of faith and we're going to be looking at the power of faith in Mark chapter 9, verses 14 through 29. Amen. Close out.